Does he have some question marks? Sure, but he also has a really high ceiling. Athleticism really stands out in the run game and his power at the point of attack. With the third pick, the New England Patriots like. All right, it's Deuce and Lazar, and we are back with our final mock draft. Evan, we made it. The 2024 NFL draft is almost upon us. We've had so much analysis going on these past few months. I know you've yeah. been deep in the film. This is a, these are our guys, right? This is what we're getting to. Well, kind of, because we're kind of trying to illustrate two different versions of the mock draft. We didn't yeah. want to do the same thing, but I think we're both kind of thinking the same thing if it's there. So without further ado, let's hit that first pick. This is my first overall pick. And Let's face it, Evan, you would probably be, I know you did a mock draft as Hearts well with this guy, yeah. but I'm there with Drake May. I think he's the perfect fit for what the Patriots need right now. Does he have some question marks? Sure, but he also has a really high ceiling. Evan, that's what I like. I want to bring a guy in here that we can groom a little bit, let him develop if he needs to, but he's got all the skill in the world, the physical, the arm, he can run, he makes left-handed throws, be exciting pick for the Patriots. Yeah, I just think when you look at the history of the draft in recent years, guys like Josh Allen, guys like Justin Herbert, a lot of the same concerns were brought up in the pre-draft process. Allen, his accuracy, his rawness overall, Herbert, type of offense he was playing in, a level of competition. All these things were said about those guys, and we almost nitpicked them to the point where we all outsmarted all of ourselves. And I feel like that's what's happening right now with Drake May, is that this was a guy that was the consensus QB2 in this draft from the beginning of 2023 on. Now we get to this part of the process and all of a sudden he stinks, you know? And I think that that's what we need to keep in, in you know, context or, you know, realize that he has been the prototypical quarterback prospect in this class really since the end of 2022. So all these little nitpicks and all these little details that we get into, let's not overthink it. If Drake May is there at three overall, he should be a Patriot. It's that simple. So we'll be holding our breath there as uh, Washington makes their pick at second overall. Now, Evans, we're going to illustrate a little bit of a different yes. option here where you could trade down. And we know Minnesota has yes. a couple picks. That's what you did here. You went with the big tackle from Penn State. Yeah, so in the next slide, we'll show the exact trade. But I did the Minnesota trade that everybody else has been doing. It's the two first-round picks this year and the first-round pick in 2025. You trade down to 11, and you draft a guy in Olu Fashionu, who is really just a prototypical left tackle. You can see the size there, 6'6", 320, 30. 5 inch arms. He's got all of the elements of that prototype you see at the position. Excellent feet, can hit all the landmarks, whether it's in pass protection, run blocking. I think his athleticism really stands out in the run game and his power at the point of attack. And uh, he has a little bit more nastiness to him, I would say, than somebody like Joe Alt. Joe Alt's really that position protector, whereas Olu Fashinu, he really comes out and, and does some different things with his play strength that are really impressive. A little bit more on uh, technical side, needs to be a little bit uh, developed there compared to Joe Alt. I think that's the big reason why Alt is looked at as a little bit of a higher prospect is because he's more polished, as you say, this time of year uh, than a, goal, a guy like Olu. But in general, you look at just the ball of clay, kind of like Drake May. He's kind of the tackle version of Drake May, and I think the Patriots would be better off if they do trade down, taking the tackle of the future left tackle for the next decade type, yeah. type of thing. Those two positions, I mean, just quarterback, wide receiver, tackle as well. I mean, those are the three that they need. And as you can see here, we're going to look at our just our first two days of picks. So it's the top 100 about. If you want to see the full mock drafts, go ahead and check them out on Patriots.com. But we just wanted to illustrate what you did. Now, going back to me, I, knew, I saw the tackle need too, Evan. So I yeah. traded back in. I took. I went with the Packers. Hopefully they'd want to trade down a little bit. You know, you know how that works. But I went and got Tyler Guyton, who not all that different than Fashando. I mean, yeah. a very athletic guy. Maybe he could be a little bit more of a right tackle. But again, a raw guy needs some developmental time. But that's where the Patriots are at. They got to be patient. They got to get these guys in, give them some time to develop. I really like what I've seen out of Tyler Guyton. So as you can see, we're all kind of thinking the same thing here with our first three picks. Why don't you talk a little bit about A.D. Mitchell? I know he's a favorite of yours. He's one of my favorites. 4-3-5 in the 40-yard dash at 6 2 2 5 That's the starting point. He's got the vertical speed, he's got the size, but I think at his size what makes him so uh, such an alluring prospect for me is the route running. He's got that ability at his size to sink and cut at the first two levels, dig routes, slants, things of that nature, and create a lot of underneath separation as well, and then also win at the catch point with that 40-inch vertical. So you have all these elements of him that maybe he wasn't the big-time producer in college that his, uh, his you know, his recruiting class and all that kind of stuff, thought that he was going to be transferred from Georgia. Uh, but you look at all of the tools that he has in his tool belt, I think he's going to be a really good pro. I'm not completely ignoring the quarterback position. We <laughs> didn't go quarterback at three. We traded down. But I am going to take Bo Nix because I think with Bo Nix, and I know everybody is like, oh, he's so boring, Bo Nix. But with Bo Nix, you have the left tackle here, 
right? You have your X receiver there. And then I came back and took Ricky Pearsall here, who's, you know, that slot type, right? That slot Julian Edelman type of player. So if you have these three boxes checked and you have all this talent around the quarterback, taking a guy like Bo Nix, who's accurate, on time, can win from the pocket, experienced 24-year-old rookie, he has all these elements of being that distributor that can just sit there and kind of, uh, you know, get the ball out to A.D. Mitchell and Ricky Pearsall and Fashan, who's going to give him the time to do it. So if you're going this direction, what the good thing is, is you don't need the specimen that is Drake May to put it all on his shoulders. You can allow Bo Nix to do what he did at Oregon, which is just distribute the football and set the college record for completion percentage, right? Like that's all you need him to do. So even though he doesn't have the highest of upsides, he has that ability, I think, to get the ball out to the guys he needs to do. Yeah, I think what it illustrates here, Evan, is like we both kind of have to sell out a little bit on one position. And the one position what I'm selling out on is wide receiver. The one you're selling out a little bit on is quarterback. I really like Javon Baker, though. I mean, maybe, is he going to be that X receiver on the outside that they need? Maybe. Probably not. But overall, could be a guy who contributes in a number of ways. Runs hard after the catch. Isn't a blazer, but strong hands. Kind of a playmaker. So, yeah. you know, but again, this is what we're talking about. The difference between Mitchell and Baker. And you see the drop off a little bit there. But right. same thing. Drake made a Bo Nix. Yeah. So that's what we're, I think every mock draft that you see for the Patriots, those are kind of the questions you're trying to answer. Absolutely. Drake May is going to elevate Javon Baker. In my scenario, everything else is going to elevate Bo Nix. And it's just which way do you want to go if you're the Patriots? I'm inclined to say that way. I am. Like, I know I did this way, but we just did it for the sake of the exercise. Right. But this, you can see the, the bones of how this could really work out for them. And then don't forget, you also have that 2025 first, so you're going to have two first round picks again next year. So there's a really good, uh, I think, argument for both sides. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Two examples of kind of two different directions the Patriots could go. I think we both really have our eyes set on Drake May. But be sure to check out Patriots.com for the full mock draft. You can see our other picks. I can't, forgot about Ben Sinnott down there. Ben good Sinnott. tight end, but we'll have to check out Patriots.com to read about him. Also coming up, our 50 big boards, which we've been doing for a long time. Our 50 favorite fits for the Patriots. So plenty of draft content coming your way here as we close in on the 2024 NFL Draft.